Blog Talk Radio. Everybody to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We got a lot going on today. We're going to have a wonderful show for you. Definitely glad that you can be with us today. And in fact, if you want to dime in, 516-418-5572. 516-418-5572. That's the number. I'm Allen. We don't bite. Feel free to come on in. So welcome to the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We're going to have a wonderful show for you, but before we get started, let's go ahead and thank one of our outstanding sponsors. Go ahead and thank Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Feel free to visit my great friend Chef G's right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, it's okay. Feel free to visit Chef G's right here at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. All of the great music you're going to hear tonight is by Sam Scola Songs. And in fact, we have another great song for you by Sam Scola Songs. That is the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song. We're going to play that for you right now. Let's go. Counts and for variety, Chef G's growing up barbecue sauce. Counts and for variety, Chef G's growing up barbecue sauce. A natural flavor, Chef G's growing up barbecue sauce. Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic taste for chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. 
Definitely don't forget to visit Chef G's right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, visit him at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget that great sauce, folks. Let's go. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring on an outstanding caller here. Let's do that here on the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. All right. Hey, how you doing? Thank you, Alan. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. How you been? <laughs> All right. And uh, thanks for the introduction, Sam. All right. No problem. Well, yeah, that's it it. Is, he's a big fan. Yeah. Well, it's a sad day in the hockey world as we lost not one but two members, and they come from the same family, the Gordo brothers. Yes, definitely. You know, rest in peace. And to make it to make it matters even worse. I mean, now the report where they were coming from, they were coming to New Jersey. Like, oh, wait a minute, they're from Columbus. Like, what are they doing here? They know they own New Jersey, but they were attending their sister's wedding at, up in a way down South Jersey, which is near the Pennsylvania border. And now this. I mean, that's that's a, that's a shame. I mean, that is a real tragedy. You're, I mean, you're down here for a joyous occasion, and it's a tragedy. Not just for the hockey world, but, you know. No, you're absolutely right. It is a shame, you know. It really, truly is a shame. It's just that um, one of these things that just unfortunately happened, and it's really a tragic event. Like you said, you're going to a joyous occasion. It is a shame, you know. And you don't know what can end up happening. It really, truly is a shame. And, um, is it a drunk one of these things that just unfortunately happened, no. and it's really a tragic event. Yeah, uh, rest in peace for sure. And it is a shame, you know. Yeah. And you don't you know, know that's why you, get, you can't drink, you're drive, and, um, you can't be it driving drunk, folks. It's a serious thing. Happened. It really is. And yes. Yeah, it's just um. Even if you're tipsy, you might be worse off than you think. So just don't do it. There's Uber, Absolutely. there's Lyft, there's, you know, there's no reason for you to drive yeah, while intoxicated. Down, yet, but yet you decide to be stupid and take two lives away. Yeah, it's sad. It really it is. is. It is. Yeah, so, so sad. Yeah. Let's say a moment of silence for yeah. the tragic loss. Yeah, it's sad. It really is, yeah. you know? Yes. Absolutely. There's just no excuse for that kind of stupidity. No, you got Uber, you got Lyft. You, you know, it's very convenient now for you to get a, a ride. Event. Yeah, right. yeah. It is, for sure. It's, it's, it's very convenient. Yeah. And you, you know, know, why you, get, you, you, know, you still got to be careful out there, though, folks. There's driving drunk. Of course. It's not everybody. Is, it's unfortunate. It is. Yeah. So there's always bad apples in every bunch. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah. Even if you're tipsy, you might be. But yeah, on a so more do it. positive yeah, note, sure. what do you think about your Jets yeah, now that the final know, cuts no have been made? You to drive well, well yeah, well, the jury, the jury's still out there, man. I mean, you know, let's go what? to the field and let's just get the, let's, what Aaron, Aaron Rodgers does after, you know, really recovering from his injury. You know, is he going to yeah. get injured again and whatnot? You know, uh, I think it's going to yeah. be his last season uh, either way. Let's say a moment of silence for. Yeah, I agree. I I don't see how you can play again after this year. And for his sake, I hope he has a pretty good year because he missed a mm-hmm. lot of a lot of time. You know, that's a lot of time you yeah. miss. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, well, yeah, it's sad. Well, it really is. Days, you know, uh, Rutgers uh, won their first game last night no against the, against the. Howard. No, you got Uber, Florida, you got Howard. Lyft. You know, it's very convenient now for you to get a, a ride. And also, Colorado won. What do you think about very convenient, yeah. and you know, yeah. how they might do this yeah. year? You still got to be careful out there, though, folks. Colorado, Colorado. Not everybody Colorado. is. Yeah. So there's always <laughs> bad apples in every bunch. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. yeah. Colorado, yeah. Colorado, Colorado you State. Tipsy, you might be, but yeah, on a more. Do it. 
positive. No, I'm talking about the the boulders. Do yep. How do you think they get yeah, it? I think the idea is the jersey is still out there, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, Alabama yeah. was going to go. You know, yeah, let's Georgia is going to rebound. So, you know, get yeah. Henry's going to, after, you know, yeah, yeah. recovering from his injury. You know, you know, last game last year, and I think it was for some of the I think it's going to be a Let's say a moment of silence for Notre Dame. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't see how yep. he can play again after this year. And for his sake, I hope he has a pretty good year. Yeah, so. Yeah, so you got some – some. Th- you think Colorado's going to do pretty good? I do. What makes you feel like you're going to do a lot better? I usually take this for Monday, but now the brothers are – the brothers are in the top ten right now. Yeah, sad. Is it So – no, you got Uber, you got Lyft. Uh, you know, it's very convenient you know, now to get a, a ride. Uh, and also, Colorado won. What do you think about yeah. convenient? You know, how they might do this? Oh, yeah? Thing. Still got to be careful out there. Yeah, oh, I'm not, I'm not, always wondering how well, uh, not everybody is. I think they're going to too hot. Yeah. So, there's always bad apples in every bunch. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah. Yeah, Are there any other teams you hope to do well in college football? Positive. No, talk about the, the, the Boulders. Yep. How do you think they're going to do? Okay. Okay. Let's say a moment of silence. Or, okay. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a great matchup. Yeah. can play again after this year. And for his uh, sake, I hope he has a pretty good year. Yeah, so. Yeah, so you got some. some do you think Colorado's going to do pretty good? I do. I was right about. Uh, what makes you feel like you're going to do a lot better? Oh, yeah? What'd you say? But, yeah. I said they were going to win against Florida yeah. State. Man. The prophet speaks. The prophet speaks. So, ha ha on the rest of you who died, me. My man knows what he's talking about, folks. He yes. is the prophet. Yeah. AKA Lou. That's why Sam Scola songs a big fan of yours. Oh, he is. Yeah. Yeah, he Thanks is. How about that? Thanks, Sam. Come on the show sometime. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We got to get Sam more often. That's uh, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you know, he is a big fan of yours. Oh, how about that? I didn't know you had a fan club. Yeah, he's that thing, you know. The yeah. fans you don't even know about. Yep. Yeah. Eleven years in the eleven years in this racket, and now I got a fan club. That's right. You got to start signing autographs now. Yeah. If only if only your wife can interview me. Nah, they won't. I'm sorry, say again? If only New York Live would interview me. Nah, they won't. They never heard of me. It's it's a local show here in the New York area now and it's it, it doesn't reach it doesn't reach that far south. Okay, I was about to say. No, well, it's, keep... it's only it's it's only New York, New Jersey and some parts of Connecticut. Okay. If you go down past, uh, say, uh, Hartford, you won't get it. Yeah. Because then, you, because then you reach New England territory. Okay, so it's not it's not available by me at all then. Unless you get a satellite. <laughs> yeah. I so. tried. I tried. Okay, so it's okay. not it's not available by me at all then. But yeah, not speaking of the well then you can treat it. <laughs> well yeah, you can treat it probably. Yeah. I tried. So, I tried. Okay, that's so right. it's not, it's that's not right. available by me yeah. at all then. Yeah. But yeah, not, yeah. speaking yeah. of I got it. I got it here on the call. Well, yeah, you can show it. Yeah. I tried. Oh wait. Okay, that's right. It's not available by me at all then. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Speaking All right. Yeah, yeah we so... got the uh, last one. Last one of the baseball season. It's got to come down to the last week. It's got to come down, I think, to the fast few games between the Yankees and the Orioles. 
Yeah. Well, it's coming down to the end. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And I hate to right. Right. Yeah. 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 break the record and most losses? Yep. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, yeah so it's going to happen. That's but definitely not a great record to have, that's for sure. I said, will, will the, Yankees. the White Sox lose 100 games before September 1st? And sure enough, they have. Well, it's coming down to the end. That's right. Yep. Prophet speaks, yeah. folks. The yeah. prophet speaks. And oh, wait, wait. Hey, he's right. Yeah. 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 Break the record. Yeah. 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 Break the record on most losses. Yep. yep. So, yeah. You're oh, right. Wow. You're right. Yeah. yeah so, it's gonna that, so what do you got that cooking for tomorrow? Big, time tomorrow? Big time tomorrow. No, 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 no. Sunday. Sunday the site. That's right. It'll be Sunday. 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 So let's come down to the end. That's right. Right. The prophet speaks, yeah. folks. The prophet speaks. We'll do uh, uh, right. uh, We'll recap the Little League World Series. Yes. Uh, I'll try to break the record of the uh, WBC World yep. Cup. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. We got That's, college what do you football. got cooking for tomorrow? Big time oh, tomorrow. Our first NFL preseason pick. Sunday is night. That's right. Exciting. I look forward to talking to you on Sunday. I hope you're welcome. Because I wasn't going to do it on the next Sunday because if I did a show during while well, the, well, the, well, the NFL games are on Sunday, forget it. I wouldn't get any way at all. Not a chance. It's different with college on Saturday because they start all different times and go through whatever. One game started, some games started at noon, some games started at three, some games started at seven, and whatever. So I get a good chance. If it was Sunday during football season, no. It's different with college on Saturday because they start all different times and go through. Yeah. Whatever. One game so, starts, some games start at noon. You some got a chance. Three, oh, some games start at seven. Or whatever. So I Sunday, a tomorrow, he's going to be Sunday, not on the air season. Saturday, Sunday, no. it's 4 and 6 p.m. That's right. All different times and go Make through. sure you call yeah. in. So that is, uh, uh, I'll say goodnight. You and got I'll, a chance. I'll see you, Diane. Is that correct? Sunday, tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. No problem. Have a good night. Thank you so much, Lou. Appreciate you. Talk to you Sunday. So, yes, folks, that's uh, Lou, the Enhanced Sports Show. Make sure you tune in 4 to 6 p.m. Sunday. Usually it's Saturday, but it's not this Saturday. It has been moved to Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. And, again, that phone number is 512-543-4662, 512-543-4662. Check that out. The Enhanced Sports Show. 
So, yes, folks, we got a lot to unpack here. And speaking of that, you know what? It is an opportunity right now that the summer is going to start to come down to the wire. It's going to go ahead and pick up with something really cool. Guess what? It's a great opportunity for you to go ahead and take advantage of a new home here in Florida or Texas. And with that opportunity, guess what? CTC ME Mortgage can help you. That's right. That man right there, Kurt McRae, can help you. CTC ME Mortgage is one of our outstanding sponsors. Call or text Kurt McRae at 346-527-7564. Then at 346-527-7564. You need to refinance your home. Or if you're looking for a brand new home, that gentleman right there, Kurt McRae, can help you. And if you want, you can also visit ctcmemortgage.com. He will make sure he gives you an outstanding deal. I saw he closed the deal just the other day. So now it's your turn for you to get your home to start building your equity. So without further ado, we're going to play another great Sam Solo song. That is the CTC Emmy Mortgage song right here on the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. CME Mortgage Company. That's right. Make sure you give Kurt McCray a call or text at 346-527-7564. Again, that's 346-527-7564. Or feel free to visit their website, ctcmemortgage.com. My man's clearly closing a lot of deals, so make sure you go ahead and give him a call today. And that's want to thank CTC ME Mortgage for being another one of our wonderful sponsors. That's awesome. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and dive right into a lot to discuss, a lot to unpack. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the recent 53-man roster. And if you didn't make the cut, I know it was a tough day for a lot of people. Some of the cuts were actually made before. Tuesday's deadline and so leading up to it you saw some great players getting cut and as a person who covers the sport it was actually hard for me to watch because you know that these guys put their heart and soul into making a team you know these are the facts somebody puts their heart and soul into making a team and you know that at the end of the day you are going and not just you but you and others are going to 
be sent home. And, you know, you can maybe make a practice squad and somebody gets hurt. But it's a long, tough day for you to get that call or be brought into the office that you did not make the team. You know, so first and foremost, my heart goes out to the players who did not make it and make the 53-man roster. You know, I can only imagine how tough that is. I know how competitive guys are, and I know how tough it is for you to, right before the season starts, you think you're good and you're not, you know. So my heart goes out to that. But on the second hand, you know, definitely there was some players that did make it. So first and foremost, I, I got to give them their props too. I got to give, you know, Jake Bates, you know, he, <laughs> we all knew. We all knew he was going to make the team. It wasn't a really surprise for me. And that's what I think. I think if you are a kicker, I think you have a very good chance to make the team. If you do, if you're a kicker and you do play, let's say for the UFL, I, I think you want to be in the, in the UFL at that point at that chance, because I feel like you have a very, very good opportunity to make the team because of the exposure you get. And it's a specialized thing to be a kicker or punter. And if you do well, you get a lot of spotlight. That's why of all the players that, that did get taken, it didn't surprise me at all that Jake Bates made it. Not not even one bit. And in fact, I expected him to make the team. So the fact that he made the 53-man roster really was not a surprise to me at all. And in fact, to his credit, and to the UFL, if you are a kicker, punter, you want to be right there playing for the UFL if you're not playing for the NFL. Having said that, let me go ahead and say congratulations to Jalen Redmond, defensive tackle for the Arlington Renegades. The UFL Arlington Renegades, props to him. He made it too. So let me give both of those gentlemen a round of applause. Let me do that first and foremost. Yeah, so again, I, I don't think the sound came through. Let me just say it again. The NFL practice squad players that made it was Malik Foster, defensive end, Houston Texans, Kevin Harmon, wide receiver for Dallas Cowboys, Liam Fortinell, Fortinell, and that's a offensive guard for the New England Patriots, Brandon Smith, wide receiver for New York Jets, and again, for the players that made the 53-man squad, that was Jalen Redmond, tackle for the Arlington Renegades. He made the Vikings. And we have Jake Bates, kicker for the Detroit Lions. All of these gentlemen deserve another round of applause. Let me do that again. Yes, so it that's that's outstanding, you know. It really is. It really is truly outstanding. Now, that's all the great stuff. Now I'm going to let you know a little bit about what I think is not so great on this scenario. One of the things that I've noticed, this is my observation, with the guys that are coming from the UFL to compete for the NFL, I noticed that a lot of them were getting signed kind of late in the game where they had missed some training camp and came in, which I think is a little bit unfair because the UFL schedule ends clearly before training camp starts. If you're interested in somebody, you have a chance to sign them and get them into camp early and get them into camp on time with everyone else. Anytime you show up to any event, let's say myself, I show up to an event to cover 
there's a different feeling and a vibe, completely different vibe when you show up there early and you show up and you see everything unfolding as it happens versus you miss the first day or you, you miss the first hour and then you show up. So I do think the timing of some of the times that the UFL guys show up is not really, in my opinion, that fair. Another thing that I don't think is really fair is I don't really think the guys that are from the UFL, the overwhelming majority, not every single one, but the overwhelming majority, I noticed that I don't feel like they're getting a fair shake at making the 53-man roster. No joke. You know, you throw a guy, Sal Canella, two balls for 16 yards. How are you going to make a team with that, that type of volume? My man gets more balls thrown to him in a drive. Then on top of that, I felt as if some of the players that did compete did better than some of the guys that they kept on their roster. I mean, that's what that was kind of clear to me. Like, okay, if we're competing for a job and I'm out playing somebody and it's not really that close, but yet you still give the job to the other person who I kind of beat out. Did you really give me a fair opportunity to make the team? Well, that's really, really debatable. And more, more often than not, you're going to feel no. So I felt as if some of my UFL guys didn't really get the positional players, that is, a fair shake in cracking the code and making a 53-man roster. Out of all the players taken, we have two players who actually made the roster, one of them being a kicker, and four men making the NFL practice squad. So... We had 70, 77, I believe the final number was, that was from UFL to the NFL, got signed into a camp. So my question would be, is this just a PR stunt, the UFL and NFL, or is this really a legitimate opportunity that somebody from UFL is getting? Bringing somebody to camp, but you really want to play somebody else is not really a good opportunity. You know, because no matter what that player does, you're not really paying them much attention. You're really considering the other person. I felt, you know, let's, let's look at it. I, I, you know, I could give specific examples, but I'm not going to at this point in time, I will save that for another conversation another day, but I felt like some of the guys in UFL balled out during training camp and should have been on that roster. I'm going to talk more about the subject a bit more, but we're going to put that aside for now. And yes, so if you didn't make the roster, you can't give up on your dream that easy. You have to keep fighting. You know, you have to keep going forward. You just can't let it deter you. Because here in the Allen Alpha Sports Arc Show, I'm going to make sure that that is one of the things I look into is are my guys from UFL getting a fair shake at making the roster? We will see. I'm not saying all of them should have been signed, but it's really, with the level of talent that I've watched and seen, it's hard for me to accept that there's that many more players better than them making the roster, and my guys are not. We'll see. So, having said that, we're going to go ahead and switch gears a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and talk about college football in just a moment. But hey, if you need to go ahead and take advantage of travel, especially now with college football starting up, NFL season going to start. It's starting <laughs> next week. Make sure you put your fantasy football team together real quick. Guess what? You need to travel. We have a solution for you. And that is none other than Pushpin Adventures. That's right. Pushpin Adventures can help you. You, we want to thank Pushpin Adventures for being one of our outstanding sponsors. But Pushpin Adventures can help you do destination weddings. They also can help you do international travel, domestic travel, cruises, going to a Costa Rica, going to any destination of your choice. They can help you. Paris, we just had Olympics there. Destination weddings, destination weddings. Pushpin Adventures can help you. Group travel. Corporate travel. That's right. Visit pushpinadventures.com backslash virgin, or you can go ahead and give Monique a call right there. Give Monique a call. She'll take care of you. She'll make sure you get an outstanding deal, life 
changing trip. Phone number is 626-838-1006. Again, Monique is 626-838-1006. We're going to play another great Sam Scola song for you right now, and that is the Pushpin Adventure song here on the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. Let's go. Dream of Reality, give them Monique a call at 626-838-1006. Again, at 626-838-1006. Or feel free to go ahead and visit pushpinadventures.com. And they're going to make sure they take wonderful care of you there at pushpinadventures.com backslash version. If you want to check out more about that great cruise that you just saw so wonderful, wonderful sponsor. Thank you so much, Pushpin Adventures. Really dramatically, we appreciate you. And yes, so what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about college football. <laughs> so, you know, the question is, it's the start of college football. Colorado did win game one season opener. Let's go ahead and give them a round of applause for that. Hey, a win is a win is a win, right? All right. Got the first win underneath their belt. So they're doing wonderful. And that's awesome. They they got their first win. It always makes the day it starts off great when you win the first game. I know that it wasn't a top one team, but hey, a win is a win. And that's what Colorado needs to do. They need to try to make sure they shore up, even if it's not the number one teams or the top teams, you got to take advantage of the teams that you should win on your schedule. So a great start. I'm going to give my thoughts on Coach Prime and the media, and I'll say it like this, you know, I would have to agree with what some of the people said that they were disappointed in the way coach prime handled the situation. I would have to agree with that after looking at all the evidence, everything that was presented. Hey, 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, Coach Prime was kind of chirping, chirping at one reporter. Then he bans another reporter. Look, you can't be so thin skinned comes to dealing with the media. The thing about it is they're still giving you coverage, even if it's not positive as far as Coach Prime is concerned. The fact that you are getting media coverage is a positive thing overall. And the reason why I was a little bit disappointed because Coach Prime is a believer. One of the things they tell you, one of the first things they tell you in the book is man will disappoint you. And also on top of it, it lets you know clearly that you're going to get haters. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how, how famous you are. It doesn't matter how giving you are, how thoughtful you are, how nice you are. At the end of the day, it is a proven fact that people are going to hate. And usually those reasons are more of a reason for people to hate on you because you have more than what they have. And it's nothing that you have done directly a lot of times to hurt someone. But usually people who are haters, let me break this down for you, are usually people who are unhappy with themselves. They are unhappy with themselves. And on top of it, they are insecure themselves. So hence, instead of working hard to improve their situation, they get bitter, they get angry, and they get upset and jealous. They will try to tear down somebody else. They look at who they feel is successful, who is doing positive things. They'll try to tear them down so that they can feel better about themselves being where they're at. That's what a hater does, and that's what they thrive at. The, you know, Coach Prime doesn't need to get caught up into this. Okay, if the person's taking personal shots, you know, saying you're false prophet and all that nonsense, you got to ignore it. You know, that's just the end of the day. The best weapon against a hater is just to block it out and ignore it because then they feel even worse. They're like, oh, man, I'm dissing this person taking personal shots and they're not even responding to it. So it really minimizes them even more because like, oh, man. I can't even be a hater and get a a response out of it. You got to let that stuff go because at the end of the day, it's just negative energy, negative distraction. For the last week and a half, this was the story about having thin skin, the program making demands. And yeah, it did look, it did look kind of small, like from coach prime, all you need to do to turn things around and kind of block out the noise is keep doing what you did the other day and that's win games that's it now it's it's year two the criticism is going to be a bit more because now they've already seen you for a season and the team underperformed you started off great and then you lost the last you know i could be wrong it was i believe it was last seven could be off on that i believe it was seven or eight i don't have that number in front of me but the point is it started off great and then it went off the rails real fast and then it never recuperated where you won other games This year, you got to make sure you continue to keep that stride of winning. That'll block out all the noise. And yeah, you can't be so thin skinned when somebody says something negative. It is showing a pattern of behavior as far as Coach Prime that he doesn't like it when people say stuff negatively through the media. Not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to see your worth. Not everybody's going to appreciate what you do. Again, all of this is in the good book. So just ignore it. Keep going forward. You remember you have a higher purpose. Now, I will say this much, though, as far as the football part of the game. Shador and Travis was balled out. I mean, Travis made Shador look like he was – he got him all those yards after catch, all those great yards. I mean, he was just balling out. They couldn't stop him. I will submit, though – that one-two punch the door to Travis Hunter isn't going to be a formula that's going to get you win after win after win, meaning it worked this game, but believe me and you, it's not going to work every game. You're going to have to find help from other ways on the Colorado Boulders because if you don't, this season could turn out like last season. People are going to adjust, and they're going to know that, hey, your number one receiver is Travis Hunter. We're going to make it difficult for you to get the ball to him. You're going to have to get it to someone else. They're also going to bring more pressure on your door. It can start to unravel pretty quickly. So basically, don't just rely on your door to Travis. 
You got to have other options. Again, they were sensational, the two of them. Big win, and congratulations. That's what you also need to do. Keep winning the games you're supposed to win, and then it'll take care of itself. So I had the honor this this past week of covering some outstanding events. That was the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. It was awesome. You know, there was, at the event, there was supposed to be eight inductees, but we had half, four, but guess what? The great thing is October 15 and 16 is going to be an outstanding event. They're going to have the VIP reception and kind of like a party. And then the next day, they will have the official Hall of Fame induction. Expect Alan Alfred's Sports Talk Show to be there and covering that event for both days. I will make sure that I do that for you guys. Let me run down and give you all of the Hall of Famers and the inductees. Here, let me pull up the list. And yeah, it was it was awesome to cover that event in Orlando and to definitely <laughs> have such a great time. Now the ones that were there and present, let me talk to them about them first. That was Mr. William Barnon Floyd, former NFL running back, and he was actually the last fullback that first round draft pick that was ever drafted in the first round as a fullback he was the very last one drafted by the san francisco 49ers also yep won a super bowl as well super bowl champion and a national champion outstanding that's wonderful let me give him a round of applause that's fantastic so national champion as well as super bowl champion that's, that's great. And we have Mr. Scott Hutchison, former former defensive end for the Buffalo Bills and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Interesting fact is that Mr. Hutchison played with the Bucks creamsicle uniforms, which is outstanding. And now that is something that you see quite often now. Uh, you know, it's always a great thing when they bring back the creamsicles. But times have changed now. You only get the creamsicles on throwback days. But my man, Scott Hutchin, played with it throughout his playing year when he did play for the Bucks. that is. So, round of applause goes out to Mr. Hudson as well. <laughs> All right. So, next is we tap into the ladies. We have Miss Jan Stevenson, World Golf Hall of Famer which is fantastic. You know, she's from Australia, came here to Florida. She talked about how great it is to live in Florida because it's kind of like Australia, but you're here in the U.S. and you get to play year round. So she's a Hall of Famer. And then, you know, we give her a round of applause too. Out the list, we have Miss Linda Gooch, head cheerleading coach for the UCF Knights, doing her big thing. She had a chance to tell us about all of the great events she partakes in, even to this day. She, you know, she talked about how times have changed. She's outstanding. Let me give her a round of applause as well. Yes, and that was the four of the eight that was in attendance, but the ones that were not in attendance, who's also going to be inducted on October 15th and 16th, is Ashlyn Harris for soccer, Mike Holloway, track and field coach. We have also Chris Patrick, athletic trainer, and riding off the list is a familiar name to probably everybody. And that is none other than former great basketball player, Tracy McGrady. So he's going to be in the house too. Achievement for all of them. It's going to be outstanding events for those two days. Can't wait. 
Let me give them all a round of applause for their accomplishment. Yeah, that was awesome. So I got a chance to cover that event, and that was really, really awesome. And another great thing I was able to do this week, for those who don't know, I was able to have, you know, an outstanding guest, Jerry Ferrara. That's right. Jerry Ferrara came on the show this week. And let me just say this before I, I forget. For my three sponsors, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, that is CTCME Mortgage, as well as Pushpin Adventures. Typically, I would incorporate a little bit of promotion for the videos for those sponsors. But the thing is, uh, that interview was yesterday, which is Thursday, for with me and Jerry Ferrara. The new show is premiering a week from to, from Thursday, which is going to be I'm losing sight of the time. September 5th. Let me just double check. Yes, it premieres September 5th, a week from today. So that's what made it a time crunch. I wouldn't have had enough time to get the video kind of ready before the 5th. I might have, may or may not, it would have been pushing it close. And at that point, we just decided to just go ahead and push it out. Plus, he was doing some live interviews in that same day that, you know, they, I got heard, you know, heard from that when I was setting up this interview that he was doing some live interview. So I just figured, just put it out right away. It wasn't live, but I got it out as quickly as I could, but yeah, the show premieres. Let me show it to you guys. It's called throwbacks with Matt Leinert and Jerry Ferrara. It premieres Thursday, September 5th. They drop a new show every Thursday and that is going to be Jerry who was right there on the left with the suit. He premiered, and for those who don't know, he was Turtle in Entourage as well as in Power, which is, you know, two different type of, uh, my man's multidimensional, you know, it's two different, one is comedian type actor, the other one is a serious role, so that is Jerry Farrar, really appreciate him coming by, and his co-host, for those who don't know, is the man to the right, and he, Matt Leinart, won a Heisman Trophy, and a national championship there in college. The man to the left of him is Reggie Bush, who also won a Heisman. So there's a two Heisman winners right there. And that is a picture of Matt Leinart. And if you haven't done so already, as I said this during the interview, make sure you guys watch that 30 for 30 Trojan War. If you haven't, outstanding. You can learn a lot about USC and Matt Leinart or Lionheart as what his teammates would call him. You would see that there in that documentary, Trojan War. So throwbacks, let me show that picture one more time. Premieres with Jerry Ferrara and Matt Leinart Thursday, this Thursday, September 5th. So check it out. They're going to bring on some great guests. Tommy's going to bring on the gentleman to the right. <laughs> he, you know, who he acted with, you know, people who he met throughout his career same with Matt football is going to be a nice little you know nice little give and take because it's going to be about acting their experiences sports football basketball Mike is, um, Jerry is more of a football a basketball fanatic to say basketball fanatic he went to a couple of Knicks games so you're going to get some basketball from football a lot of cool things check it out throwbacks Great thing about Jerry, he's from my hometown, Brooklyn, New York. So he's from Bensonhurst. I'm from Brooklyn. And they're both in Brooklyn, but one is a different part. He's from Bensonhurst. I'm from Canarsie. It's still Brooklyn, all Brooklyn. And it's an outstanding interview. Make sure you guys check it out if you haven't already. But that was awesome that I had a really cool week. Florida Sports Hall of Fame. Got to interview Jerry Ferrara and... Now, another great thing that happened for the Atlanta Alpha Sports Hook show is we are verified now on Facebook. I tried to get that done a while ago. It wasn't in the cards. Lo and behold, things came around. 
We are verified. So if you check in the Alan Alford Sports Talk Show, if you don't see a check mark there, then it's somebody who's posing and want to be the Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. We are fully verified on Instagram, Facebook. Yep, Instagram and Facebook. So if you definitely see the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show with the check mark, that is our show. So we're going to bring you a lot of great things here on the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. And I really want to thank you guys because you make this all possible without your assistance, without your support, comments, feedback. It gives the motivation to keep going forward. And it is just so flattering to have you guys as a great audience. Really appreciate you. And I did want to say next week, I have a surprise for you. I won't let you know what that is just yet, but make sure you tune in. When I get closer to next Friday, I will let you know more about that. So tomorrow, me and the family are going to go to a Rays game, and we're going to be in the VIP suite, which is awesome. Or you can eat food. I just love it. The kids love it. You get a chance to eat the food. And the great thing where the VIP suite is, you get a great seats. You can see the stadium. You can see everything great. And you're, a ball is pretty much out of arm's way to hit you, too. I mean, a ball could technically hit you where you're at, but it's going to be a very, very difficult and pretty low, I would say, percentage in order for you to get hit. So you don't have to worry about you getting your food so much and you getting hit. That's going to be awesome. Always enjoy that VIP from the Rays. And speaking of VIP, I'm going to talk more about the Armando Galarraga and the Joy Joyce, the umpire, who, for those who don't know, Armando Galarraga was one out, one out away from a perfect game. Joey Joyce, who's a referee, called the runner coming down the line safe, but it clearly from without even using instant replay from everybody who saw it, could clearly see the man was out. Replay just made it even worse and showed it glaringly. This was right before the season before instant replay came into effect. And the reason why this is a story now is that a lot of people at this point are trying to get it overturned where Armando Galarraga gets at least credit for the perfect game. There's a lot more I'm going to talk about this in a bit more. I'm going to pack, unpack that whole saga. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and play another great Sam Scola song. For those who don't know, Sam Scola is the one who wrote all of the songs you hear tonight. So you can hear these same tunes again. Thank you, Sam Scola Songs and his beautiful wife, Mary. All these great songs are also available on YouTube and Spotify. I want to thank Sam Scola for all his great music. And in fact, let me let you know this too. You want to make sure you sign that great artist. Make sure you go ahead and give Sam Scola an opportunity. There he is. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. We're going to play another song. We'll take a little break here on the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. I'll talk about the Armando Galarraga, Joy Joyce saga. Give you my thoughts on that and a lot more. We're going to do a little break, play a Sam Scola song. It's going to be awesome. So let me go ahead and let you guys hear that song. Yep. And let's. Let's go here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Let me play that for you right now.
That's another sports song right there, sports theme song by Sam Scola Songs. Appreciate you. So, yes, with the Armando Galarraga and Joy Joyce game, Armando Galarraga did not get a perfect game because Joy Joyce called the runner safe. He did not overturn the play, his call. He really felt in his eyes he made the right call. It was clear, though, even before watching replay and even worse when he did watch replay that he did not get the call right. The runner was clearly out. Even the guy who ran said he was out. So my thoughts on this was this. At the time, <laughs> Armando Galarraga said now that he was in shock. That's the reason why he didn't kind of make a big scene about this play. The twist that people put on it was Armando Galarraga was trying to be a class act and just kind of just went with the flow, just took it on the chin and accepted his fate, which wasn't the fact that he got – kind of robbed of a perfect game you know Miguel Cabrera didn't let him hear it and his teammates let him hear it, but Armando Galarraga who's actually through the you know near perfect game didn't you know now that years have gone by he said that he wasn't being a nice guy why he didn't say anything but he was in a state of shock I think the more my opinion on this is the more that people nowadays kind of get angry about it and bitter about it including Armando Galarraga it makes it them, meaning Armando Galarraga, look worse. Yes, Joy Joyce blew the call, but in everybody's eyes who watched that game, watched that play, felt as if Armando Galarraga got a perfect game. It may not be in the record books. It may not be checked off as a perfect game, but everybody who played, who watched that game, felt, and to this day, even more so, that Armando Galarraga threw a perfect game. He didn't get credit for it. He kind of he got a raw deal at this. Hey, in life, this sometimes happens. You don't get the breaks. It's unfortunate. But to kind of keep trying to fight it and try to get it reversed at this point, that was the kind of the end of the era, meaning that was the end of judgment calls for the most part from Major League Baseball that was the human element of Major League Baseball up until that point. And that was kind of the punctuation point of, you know, if it's close, we're going to go to replay. So I say, let it stand the way it is. Let history be the way it is. In my eyes, in Armando Galarraga's eyes, and even people played and watched, they all felt as if it was a perfect game. Yes, you may not get the cloud of it being a check, but you got a perfect game that day. It was clear. No, that, no matter whether Joy Joyce, in which he admits he missed the call, it's over now. You know, just let it go. Let people felt as if it was a good moment. Armando Galarraga didn't act like most people would have. Would have probably got himself thrown out before he finished the game, but he didn't. He finished the game with, you know, one one extra batter from a perfect game. So everybody felt as if it was a perfect game. So just let, let bygones be bygones. Just let it go. You know, that's it. You know, you, you threw a perfect game as far as most people are concerned. And sometimes you just got to let things go as it is. And it's a part of history. You know, it's a part of history as far as people won't forget it. If just think of it like this, if Joy Joyce actually did get the call, right we would have already forgotten that Armando Galarraga threw that perfect game because nobody would have been talking about it, been no controversy. Sometimes when there is a little bit of controversy, you know what? It feels, it kind of fuels people to talk about it, the, the story about it, the injustice. So let it go. And people, because there's been players this year and even last year that threw perfect games. And you forget because, it's perfect. It happens. There's nothing, no controversy. This had some controversy, you remember. So it's not a bad thing. That's part of baseball. That's a quirky part about baseball is that it has a human element to it. You know, and just like, you know, another great example I can give you to the Armando Galarraga is, let me just go ahead and pull this up here. 
Okay. Yes, so... Yes, and that in that actually fuels what makes baseball kind of cool, is that it has that story, that human element to it, sometimes on a good side and a bad side. One great example of this is Honus Wagner. Honus Wagner, you know, it's it's not clear as to what it is. You know, most people want to believe the good side of story rather than the other flip side of story. Well, Honus Wagner basically, you know, he did have other sponsors, but for whatever reason, this tobacco company wanted to put his baseball card in a pack of basically cigarette, you know, Tabasco. And what the story is, is that either two parts could have been, it could have been that a Honus Wagner did not want his, you know, name engine like it's in this card in this pack with tobacco. You know, he didn't feel as if kids needed to buy that in order to get his card. There's a other side of story is they just didn't pay him enough. And because they didn't pay him enough, he didn't want his card in this, this set. So it's not, you know, some people want to believe A and some people want to be believe B, but at this juncture, this is going back to 19, I'm sorry, let's see, 1909, 1911, it's undetermined which way it really is. You know, hey, was it you didn't want your card in this pack of tobacco because kids had to buy tobacco to get your card, and that's really noble of you? Or B, you they didn't pay you enough for you to go ahead and kind of like endorse your card to be in this pack? Or it could have been a combination of both. You know, hey, I you know, I, I didn't like the fact that they had – the kids had to get tobacco to get my card, and also they were shortchanging me. You know, it could be A, B, or a combination of the two. It's undetermined. So that story, so lo and behold, the tobacco company, because of Honus Wagner being upset about it, stopped production. But by the time they stopped production, there was about 50 cards that were made and kind of sent out already, like the shipment was out. Baseball card you know, 1909, 1911, it was produced because now you cannot complete the set without that card. And that card, they only made about 50 of them that was released. And it's extremely rare. Not only was it rare for you to get one of the 50, this is 1909, 1911. So that's over a hundred years ago. You know, well, you know like that predates the Titanic. So, it is the most expensive baseball card so because of the story. And that's the great thing about baseball is that, yeah, it may have been injustice with Armando Galarraga and Joy Joyce, but because of that injustice and because of what happened and all the details, guess what? It's a story and we're still talking about it. So I say just let it be, you know, in my view, Armando Galarraga on that day threw a perfect game. He didn't get the credit for it. And of course, we know the rest. He threw a perfect game. So that's the quirky thing about baseball. And that's going to be one of the cool things about baseball now is that that story can still go on. Now you have instant replay. It's uh, very clear, concise. So let's think about that, you know. And technology advanced to the point and the rules in there to the point where now there is no controversy, which is kind of cool. But the flip side of that is you miss out on those stories that what if, you know, <laughs> the what if, the what if stories. So, yes, I have a lot more to talk about, a lot more to unpack. We're going to talk some boxing, some boxing, folks. We're going to talk about the Floyd Mayweather decision, the Floyd Mayweather exhibition I guess John Gotti the third. I would say before I go into what Floyd did on the second round and the whole fight, my whole thing is okay. The undercard on this fight was pretty good. You know, I'll give it a seven and a half, eight. So it did have some very good undercard action. I'm just surprised that 
why people pay for these Floyd Mayweather exhibitions. This is not this is not real boxing. It's just kind of like entertainment and playing around the way I look at it. It's not real boxing. I don't know why there's an interest in this. I really don't. I mean, yes, it was in Mexico. I get it. You know, probably get that much type of events like this too often in overseas, but I, I just don't understand it. I really don't. The fight to me was far from a professional fight. You know, for those who don't know, in the second round, the referee basically warned Floyd, and it almost seemed like he was going to take a point away from Floyd for hitting on the back of the head. I'll say, let me stop right there. Floyd Mayweather is a lot of things, but he is not a dirty puncher where he's going to purposely hit you in the back of your head to hurt and harm you. That's not his style. He's never done that his entire boxing career. The referee was wrong on that because John Gotti was very inexperienced and he just kept putting his head down. Anytime a puncher come, that would be his defense, put his head down. The issue with that is a lot of times when you keep putting your head down as your defense and you move, you put yourself in the, the flight of someone hitting you in the back of your head. He's not really trying to hit you in the back. He's, you know, he's cuffing you, but you put your head down so it looks like he's hitting you in the back of the head when he's not. John Gotti's defense was terrible, and he just kept putting his head down, kneeling, and then, you know, when you put your head down, yes, you might get hit in the back of your head because you're moving. He's throwing a punch, and you keep putting your head down. Yes, you're going to get hit. So the ref should have just said, hey, be careful. I don't really think he should even give him a warning to be – he could have just said to the guy, you you keep putting your head down. And that was another thing why this, this fight was so atrocious is that John Gotti III kept complaining after every single punch in his face. Dude, you're fighting Floyd Mayweather. The guy's been boxing his entire life. He's come from a generation of boxing, Okay. You think you're going to fight him and not get hit in the face a few times? Like, come on, bro. Why are you going to go ahead and take this money and get embarrassed yourself? Every single punch, John Gotti got hit in the face. He's complaining to the ref. I mean, how unprofessional and how whack is that? You're getting hit in the face all day long because you have crappy defense and you're complaining at the ref after every time you get a punch in the face. That was just so horrible to watch. And then he fired the referee. Now, it may have seemed like a small move, which I didn't even know you could fire ref in the middle of, of a fight, even with it being an exhibition. But it wasn't a good look on Floyd in a way because it's like, okay, if you have that power to just fire referee second round of fight because he was giving you some lip about hitting him from the back of the head, maybe he was going to deduct the point. I don't know. It was so much, you know, George Atkins. So I don't know what the end result was going to be. It was kind of convoluted. But even if it was or wasn't, the fact that you have that much power over the guys who are officiating the fight wasn't a good look, in my opinion, at all. Hey, let's look at the facts. You fought in Vegas. You always fought in Vegas, too. You didn't ever go and fight in the other person's domain or at least midway or or at least a neutral site. You fought in your hometown. And – you always had the referee of somebody you wanted to be the referee. Not a good look. And again, you're going to tell me you didn't have something to do with the refs and the judges kind of favoring you to win these fights. First of all, the ref is somebody you were cool with and obviously was approved by you. Then the judges, they had to be somewhat on the payroll because, hey, you're fighting your hometown. You know, they're just – you're controlling too much of the narrative to me. You could fire someone that quick, and then you had a replacement come in. Then you have to change clothes. It's not even say like you had a little bit of delay where you had to get someone in the ring. No, he just topped in the ring. It wasn't a good look as far as I was concerned as far as Mayweather and his role in him being undefeated. Yes, you may have gotten those wins legitimately, but I just think that wasn't a good look. You could just fire ref, get another one in. I know it's an exhibition, but it looked too smooth and too planned out, you know. So 
that's what I was even saying that when Floyd does these exhibitions, understand it's not just money you're getting and there's something else you're losing. Anytime you it's an opportunity cost. Yes, you're getting money for these exhibitions, but the opportunity cost is you're putting your legacy and what people think of you as being great every time you go to these type of fights and these things happen, it diminishes because I was like, hmm. Huh. You could just fire a referee, which I've never seen before, and most people have never seen that, in the second round because you disagreed with the call, but yet your whole boxing career, you fought only in Vegas, and you had the referee who you were cool with, and all the judges always seemed to be on your side. You're going to tell me you didn't talk to the judges too? It's It just looks shady. It looks shady. It looks shady. He br- He brought up more questions than anything. Like, okay, that's what I'd be like, okay, where is the fairness in a fight? Like, I already know these things were kind of slanted against the person you're fighting against, but it's almost seemed like you are paying your, for your wins, paying for your wins. So I'll leave it as that. From the outside perspective, it didn't look good. Fight was kind of whack. This guy, John Gotti, just kept on complaining after every single punch in his face. It almost felt like, to me, like they should have just left him alone after that one fight because it made John Gotti the third, as well as Mayweather, look even worse, the fact that they did this again. It really did. Mayweather on a, hmm, what are we doing here? You got that much power? And on John Gotti, like, okay, you're going to complain after every single punch in your face? Dude, you were horrible. You had no defense. You're a bigger complainer. Like, you did not come across as a guy that was credible in any regards. Yes, I do think Jake Jake Paul would give a better fight by a mile. It wasn't even close. Like, you you got outclassed. You're ducking your head, then complaining because you're getting hit in the back of your head. Then you get complaining, you get hit in the front in your face. Nothing worse than a complainer in sports. Nothing worse than that. And I'll say this much, folks. I think this is the reason why Kenny Lofty got X'd off that Hall of Fame ballot like that. The reason why is because the man used to complain after every single strike. Every single strike. The ball's right down the middle of the plate. He's complaining to the referee. He was like annoying. Like, come on, man. Stop complaining. Nothing worse than a complaining athlete all day, every day. Nothing worse. It makes them look terrible, and it makes the sport look bad because all you're doing is George Jackson complaining. That was John Gotti, the third. Man should have just not even done the rematch at that point. But it was terrible to watch, at least that fight. But they did have Victor Ortiz, you know, a fight before. Every time I think about Victor Ortiz, I think about that Floyd Mayweather fight. And I feel as if Victor Ortiz, in my opinion, blew the biggest opportunity of his life. He was in a ring with Floyd Money Mayweather, and Floyd was doing really good in the beginning of the fight. But guess what? Even if you put that headbutt aside, Victor Ortiz started to show some strides in his fight. He was starting to make a little bit of a comeback in this fight. And I'm not going to go so far and say I think Victor Ortiz would have won the fight against Floyd, but I think he would have made this fight very competitive and also – he would have made it so that Floyd would have known he had a fight with him the next day. But instead, Floyd, he didn't technically cheat, but he didn't do the gentlemanly thing, and he saw an opportunity to get kind of a sneaky win, and he took it. He, you know, he took, he took it. Victor Ortiz, okay, you, you headbunted him, you apologized, you, you dapped it up, you hugged it up, that's it. Let's get to the fight now. Move on. But he wanted to keep on saying, you know, show his empathy of being sorry. And again, one of the rules they teach in, in boxing, you know, protect yourself at all times. And that hurt Victor Ortiz because that was the only opportunity he got. And I would have really loved to see what would have happened if Victor Ortiz would have kept going on. Because Victor Ortiz at that time was was definitely a real deal fighter. And this was one of those fair few fights that Floyd actually had somebody who was a viable competitor and his competitor 
you know, Floyd saw a cheap opportunity to get a sneaky type win, and he took it. He didn't technically cheat, but he found it a little bit of way, to, I would say Bush League way, to win a fight, and he took it. On Victor's side, man, once you hugged it up, dapped it up, that's it. It's over now. Continue to go ahead and fight. He blew the biggest opportunity of his life because if anything, if he did really well in this fight, again, I couldn't say he would win this fight because Floyd still is more skilled than Victor, but he could have made it very, very competitive, and it may have led to him maybe getting a rematch with Floyd, another payday, another big fight, and much more. But instead, after this fight, he pretty much his career went downhill after then because he became like a has-been or a guy that should have, could have, would have. So that's what I think about Victor Ortiz when I see him. So those are my thoughts on that Victor Ortiz Mayweather fight. Floyd didn't technically cheat, but he found a sneaky way to win a fight, and he took advantage of it. And we don't do sneaky stuff here at the Allen Alpha Sports Talk Show. We give you guys great content. We're going to always continue to do that. Really appreciate you guys want to thank all of our callers want to thank my man Lou for calling in thank you so much for that and thank you for everybody that appeared on the Allen Alfred Sports Week show you know this week got more interviews and more content coming around for you guys you know you got to stay connected make sure you do that make sure you guys continue to stay connected and follow us here on Instagram Allen Alfred underscore Twitter or I should change that to X Alan Alford and please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so to Alan Alford and also make sure you definitely follow us on the Alan Alford Sports Talk Show on Facebook just type in Alan Alford Sports Talk Show and you will see it and now it has the blue check mark So, you know, it is the real deal. Holy field. So Facebook, there it is. Facebook at Alan Alfred sports talk show. So that's going to be awesome. And make sure you go check it out there. Really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And thank you to all our sponsors. Let me go ahead and thank you. Pushman adventures show sponsor. Thank you. CTC Emmy mortgage. And that brings us to Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Make sure you guys, let me make sure I get it in frame here. Make sure you guys check out Chef G's right here. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Definitely check out Chef G's right here at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Or you can visit them at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. So we're going to end the show with the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola Songs. I want to thank Sam Scola Songs. Really thank him for all that he does here for the Allen Alfred Sports Week show. Let me go ahead and let you guys remind you, you can listen to all these songs right there, are available on YouTube and Spotify. Thank you. Sam Scola Songs, his wife, Mary. And I'll leave you with his email, singalongwithsam at gmail.com. So without further ado, we're going to play the Sam Scola song, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Let's go. Comes in for variety, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Comes in for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs, tasty fusion on pork and sausage, Chicken steak chips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat, Chef G's for.
Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef cheese. Florida barbecue sauce. Chef cheese. Florida barbecue sauce. Chef cheese. Florida barbecue sauce. FG's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely don't forget to visit Chef G's right there at 301 South 22nd Street. Again, that's 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. If you can't come down to Tampa, make sure you visit him at flbbqsauce.com. Then it's flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget this delicious sauce right here. There you go. Delicious. Classic. Honey mustard, fusion, and heat wave. Can't go wrong. He has also Florida, Florida sand and rub. Going to be eating breakfast with sand with uh, Chef G's in a couple of weeks. It's going to be awesome. So without further ado, want to thank you guys again for being great supporters of the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. You guys are fantastic. Definitely thank you again for watching another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. We're going to close the show with another Sam Scola song. It's the end of the show song. So be blessed, be well, take care of yourself. And until we meet again, take care for now. Be blessed. Yeah.